Hello, and welcome to our first lecture on the mathematics of home lawn services. In this lesson, we're going to just focus on finding the service area, or how large the grass area is that we need to service. It may have been a while since you've taken a math class, but don't worry too much. This should really just be a review of things that you've already learned in the past. And most of this math will be geometry related, but we do get into a little bit of very simple algebra when calculating how much material we're going to use. It's extremely important to know the size of an area so that you can determine how much material you will need to use. While there's some room for error and variation, you want each application to be as accurate as possible. So you are using enough material to get the right results, but not so much that you're wasting product. Large areas are typically measured in acres in the United States and hectares around the rest of the world. But for home lawns, we measure in square feet. Just to refresh your memory, a square foot is a square that measures one foot on each side. But now I want you to imagine that there are two of these squares side by side. That would be two square feet, right? Right. But think about it for a second. That new larger shape would measure two feet on one side, but only one foot on the other. It may be tempting to think that a square that's two feet long on each side would be two square feet, but it isn't. That would actually be four square feet. You may recall that squaring numbers means multiplying them by themselves. So two squared equals four, just like we saw in, in that example. Uh, an eight by eight foot square would be 64 square feet because eight squared is 64. The simple formula for finding the area of a rectangle or square is base times height. Just take the length of one side and multiply it by the length of an adjacent side, not the opposite side, which would be the same length. So a rectangle that's five feet long on two sides and three feet long on the other two sides would be five times three or 15 square feet. Okay, so now we're ready to measure some lawns. Take a look at this diagram. We have an open area shaped like a rectangle that's 120 feet long at the base and 50 feet in height. Keep in mind that we're calling this height, but it's still flat on the ground. It's only higher on the sheet of paper. How many square feet is the area of this rectangle? Now I'll invite you to pause this video for a minute to work out the problem. Once you have the answer, go ahead and hit play again. Okay, go. Okay, did you get your answer? You should have come up with 6,000 square feet. You just multiply 50 by 120 to get 6,000. If you didn't get that, maybe try your math again and see where you might have gone wrong or where you might have made a mistake. If you still didn't get it, maybe start the video over again to ensure that you're fully understanding the concepts. It's important that you have this part down before we move on. We're going to do a few more of these examples before moving on and they'll get progressively more complicated. So make sure that math part of your brain is awake. Now let's take a look at diagram two here. This is another hypothetical lawn area, but it's not a nice neat rectangle like the last example. So how would we approach this? It's actually not too difficult. Notice that it's 400 feet long on one side and 300 feet long on the opposite side and then 200 feet long on the left side and 80 feet long on the far right side. This may seem complicated, but it's really as simple as splitting the two areas into two separate rectangles, calculating the area of each of those rectangles and then adding those two areas together. So go ahead and draw a dotted line down between these two. Now's a good time to hit pause again on the video. So go ahead, hit pause, then calculate the areas of those two sections, then add them together, and then hit play again and we'll see how you did. Okay, 
So you should have noticed that the rectangular section on the left is 300 feet by 200 feet, which comes out to 60,000 square feet when you multiply those two numbers. The smaller rectangle on the right is 100 feet by 80 feet. And when you multiply those two numbers, you get 8,000 square feet. Almost done. Now you just need to add 60,000 plus 8,000 to get 68,000 square feet. How did you do? Again, feel free to go back and look at it again if you have any questions at all about your results. I should mention that you could have drawn the line on this diagram horizontally to split it into two longer rectangles of completely different sizes and shapes. You would have calculated the exact same result though. The two rectangles in that case would have been 300 feet by 120 feet, which comes to 36,000 square feet, and 80 feet by 400 feet, which comes to 32,000 square feet. Add those two numbers together and you also get 68,000 square feet, just as you found before. Okay, so now we know how to calculate the area of a large rectangle, and luckily, home lawns are often large and rectangular. Uh, but they're a little bit messier than this in that they have areas that we don't want to add into the equation, into the total. For example, the house and the driveway. So what do we do? Well, we just subtract. You find the area of the total property, and then you find the areas of the parts that we don't want to apply products to, and then we subtract those from the total. So, let's take a look at diagram number three. We have a large rectangle that's 400 feet by 200 feet. Now, if we calculate those, we get a grand total of 80,000 square feet. But, notice that there's a house and a driveway. You'll need to get those out of there. So, why don't you hit pause, take a crack at it, then come on back and we'll see how you did. How did you do? This shouldn't have been too hard because the house and the driveway were both pretty easy rectangles. The house is 40 feet by 35 feet, which comes to 1,400 square feet, 1,400 square feet. The driveway is 40 feet by 10 feet, and when you multiply those two numbers, what, what do you get? Well, you should have gotten 400 square feet. So, now you just subtract 1,400 square feet for the house, and then 400 square feet for the driveway from the total of 80,000 square feet, and you are left with 78,200 square feet. Is that what you got? I sure hope so. Okay, up until now, this has been pretty easy with these big rectangles, so we're going to talk for a minute about a more complicated shape, the circle. Circles aren't quite so intuitive, so you'll need to trust me on a few things here. Let me start with a few definitions. The radius of a circle is the distance from the center of the circle to one of the sides, or to the side. So if you cut a circle exactly in half, the radius would be the length of that straight side. I'm sorry, it would be half the length of that straight side. The diameter of a circle is the entire length of that line. It cuts a circle completely in half. So if you draw a straight line from one side of a circle through the exact center point and all the way to the other side, that would be the diameter. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the edge. So the equator could be thought of as a line drawing the circumference of the Earth. The final definition here is a mathematical constant known as pi. Pi is actually a, a Greek letter that's used for this idea, but the number is roughly 3.14. I say roughly because the number is actually, it goes on forever, but 3.14 is definitely close enough for our purposes here. Okay, so now we know what the radius, the diameter, and the circumference are, and we know what pi is, but we need to know the area. So here are a few formulas, and write these down if you don't have them in front of you. The area of a circle is 
pi r squared. r is the radius, so first square the radius, multiply it by itself, then multiply that by 3.14, or pi, and that's it. If you know the radius, you can easily find the area of that circle. But what if you don't know the radius? What if you only know, say, the diameter? Well, that's a little bit harder, but don't get scared away too quickly. It's actually pretty easy. Remember that the radius is one half of the diameter. So just divide the diameter by two to get half of it, and now you have the radius. Now just multiply that radius by itself, or square it, then multiply it by pi, or 3.14, and you have your area, pi r squared. What if you only have the circumference? Hmm, okay, this one's tougher, and we'll need to throw in one more calculation for this one, but it's not too bad, so just hang in there. The circumference of a circle is the diameter multiplied by pi. So if the diameter is two inches, then the circumference is two times 3.14, which comes to 6.28 inches. But what if you're given the circumference and you need to find the diameter? And then you can find the radius and then the area. Well, since we multiplied the diameter by pi to find the circumference, we just do that backwards. We need to do the exact opposite to get from the circumference to the diameter. And do you remember what the opposite of multiplying is? Division, dividing, right? So if you have the circumference, just divide it by 3.14, and here I recommend you have a calculator with you to do that. Then you'll have the diameter. Well, then you can take that diameter and divide it by 2 to get the radius, okay? And then you can go to our old formula, pi r squared, to find the area. Square the radius, multiply it by 3.14. Okay, so it's time to put all this to use. I'm going to challenge you to find the area of a few circles. For this first one, let's say you know that the radius is 12. What's the area? Now, before you hit pause and do the math, uh, let's review the formulas quickly, okay? Area is pi r squared, pi times the square of the radius. Diameter is 2 times the radius, radius times 2. The circumference is the diameter times pi, 3.14. Okay, go ahead and hit pause to give yourself a few minutes to figure this one out, and then hit play when you're ready to resume. Okay, how did you do? The correct answer is 452.16 square feet. For real world purposes, you could round that to 450 square feet, but the correct answer is 452.16. We first multiplied 12 by itself, or squared it, to get 144. Then we multiplied that by 3.14, or pi. Okay, let's ratchet this up one notch. How about we start with a circle where you only know that the diameter is 20 feet. What's the area on this one? All right, go ahead and hit pause one more time here, and then resume playing it once you think you have the answer. Okay, how did you do? Did you get 314 square feet? That's 314 should look familiar because it's 100 times pi. Why is that the case here? Well, you should have divided the diameter of 20 by 2 in order to get the radius of 10. Then, remember pi times r squared, pi r squared? Well, the radius is 10, and 10 squared is 100, which we then multiply by 3.14 to get 314. Is that what you got? Okay, time for the toughest one yet, but I'm confident you can handle it. Okay, let's imagine you have the circle and you know the circumference. Remember, that's the length of the outer edge of the circle going all the way around. The circumference is 628 feet. So what's the area? Does it sound tough? 
It's easier than you probably think, but you do need to get into it for a second before you might realize why. So, let me bring up the formula one more time so they'll be on the screen when you play it, when you pause this clip. Okay, go ahead and hit pause and I'll see you in a few minutes when you're ready. How was it? Did you see how easy it was after dividing the circumference by pi? That should have been your first step. We need to get the radius so we can square it, but the first step is to divide the circumference by pi in order to get the diameter. 628 divided by 3.14 is 200. Nice and neat, huh? Now we need to cut that in half to get the radius, and what's half of 200? 100. That's not such a hard number to work with now, is it? Okay, so now we square 100 pi r squared, right? And 100 times 100 is 10,000. Almost done. Now we need to multiply that by pi to find the area. And what's 10,000 times 3.14? 31,400. So, a circle whose circumference is 628 will have an area of 31,400 square feet. Is that what you found as well? Okay, time to pull this all together. Remember that property we looked at earlier and calculated the area after subtracting out the area of the house and the driveway? Let's imagine that the homeowners installed a perfectly circular swimming pool in that yard as well. We won't be fertilizing the pool, we certainly shouldn't be, so we need to subtract it out of the area of the total, uh, total property. We can pull up our numbers and see that we already figured out the area of the yard as 78,200 square feet. The diameter of the pool is 30 feet. So what's the treatable area of the yard now? Okay, I'm going to again let you pause the video, take a crack at this, and come on back when you're ready. Okay, what did you get? Well, we really just needed to find the area of the pool, then subtract that from the area of the property. We knew that the diameter of the pool was 30 feet. So, first you should have divided that in two in order to find the radius. Did you do that? If you did, you'd have found that the radius is 15, 15 feet. Now we square that and we get 225, 15 times 15 is 225, then we multiply that by 3.14 pi to get 706.5 square feet. Ooh, we're into fractions of square feet now. Uh, it's not as much fun, but you'll find that this is very often the case. In fact, more often than coming up with nice clean numbers. So let's subtract the area of the pool from the area of the lawn. So that's 78,200 minus 706.5 and we get 77,493.5 square feet. Now, if we were engineers putting up a new building, we would need this number to be as exact as possible. And 77,493.5 is exact and that's a number we'd have to use. For this industry though, there's a much larger margin of error. You can round that up to 77,500 for our purposes. That makes life a lot easier and it's really, really close. Uh, don't go crazy with the rounding though. You can round up by a few square feet to make things easy here and there, but you shouldn't round this up all the way to say 80,000 square feet. All right, now we've learned how to calculate square footage for a bunch of different lawn scenarios. But there's one relatively tricky one that a lot of people get confused by. And this is the border problem. And here's how it works. Imagine you have a garden and then you, you plant a border of lawn around that garden. You need to figure out how much area is lawn and how much is garden, but specifically the lawn area. So imagine the guardian, garden is 20 feet by 30 feet. Now imagine that the outer edge of the border is 40 feet by 30 feet. Okay, so what do we do? Well, the easiest and most straightforward thing would be just to use the same approach we used, 
when figuring out the lawn area on the property with the house and the driveway and the swimming pool. We get the total area and then we subtract out the stuff that we don't want to be trading. We don't need those measurements. So let's do that. The outer edge is 40 feet by 30 feet, which multiplies to a grand total of 1,200 square feet. The garden in the center is 20 feet by 30 feet, which multiplies out to 600 square feet. So we just subtract 600 square feet of the garden from the total of 1,200 square feet, and we get 600 square feet. In this case, the border is the same area as the garden itself. Now, there's a few ways you could have approached this problem, but I'm going to show you one wrong way just because it's a mistake that a lot of people make, and I don't want you to make this mistake. If you look at the diagram, it's clear that the lengths of the sides of the garden are exactly 10 feet shorter than the lengths of the sides of the outside edge of the border. Now, if you think about that for a minute, you should realize that the border must be five feet wide all the way around, as long as we're assuming that it's the same width all the way around. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so here's where some people go wrong. They notice and they say, aha, I can just multiply 30 by five to get the area of each of these sides, and then I can multiply 40 times five to get the area of the other two sides, and then I can add those all up. Now that would be 150 plus 150 feet square feet for the two shorter sides, which gives us 300, plus 200 plus 200 or 400 square feet for the other two sides, and then add the 400 to the 300 and we get 700. Wait a minute, didn't we just find that the area was 600 square feet, not 700 square feet? Yes, we did. 700 square feet is the wrong answer. You might already realize why, but if not, let me explain. We first did two of the sides, which I'm going to show you in red here now. So far so good? Okay, but then we did the other sides, which we'll now show in blue. Uh-oh, see what happened? Those purple corners, those areas were counted twice. And that's the danger in this method, and that's why this answer is wrong. Uh, now, I hope you found this lesson to be helpful. But we've only covered one of the two main uses of mathematics that you'll need to understand. The next lesson is on proper calibration of equipment, and on how we can calculate the amount of material we need to use once we know the area that we'll be servicing. I'll see you then.